you own Tesla shares, 54 Tesla shares that you bought in 2016 for what, $200 a piece? Yeah, I actually added a little, so I have 60 now. Okay, good to know. <laughs> All right, 60 shares. Would you support uh, a bid to go private at 420 a share? Yeah, and I, I think it doesn't fundamentally change the operational structure of the company, and I'm a long-term investor in it for a lot more than 420 per share. So public or private, I envision holding for Tesla for a long time, well, well beyond that share price, ideally. So you would go ahead with selling it back at 420? Uh, no, no, I would hold on to my shares okay, at 420. Okay. Although I'm not convinced going private is the right move, but I would hold through that. Explain. Um, I think going private is a step back in terms of transparency and liquidity. So they mentioned that you'd probably only be able to sell your stock once every six months, similar to what very large private companies do today. And so that would be a step back in terms of liquidity. And then I'd be worried that they wouldn't you know, publish their financial statements. They wouldn't have quarterly conference calls with investors. And so you know, just as a finance nerd and someone who loves to watch the case study of Tesla unfold, that's a little bit disappointing to me. And I should mention the shares are actually now taking a little bit of a leg lower uh, on this report about SoftBank because, again, we're Reportedly, the talks fell apart between SoftBank and Tesla, so kind of interesting there. Um, Galileo, when you look at the potential to go private, your initial um, reaction, it looked like, at least via Twitter, was sort of negative because it wasn't clear exactly what was going on. You also express concern about missing out on the upside, yep. even in a go private transaction. Is that still a concern for you also? No, and this is why I'm a huge fan of Elon Musk, is he replied to my tweet and said that private shareholders would have the option to hold, which is very unusual in this type of situation, so I wasn't expecting that. But then when I heard that, I was really excited, and you know, it sort of validated that Elon really wants to give back to the people who supported him since day one and will allow us to be in the company. So what do you think about the report, according to the Financial Times, that Saudi Arabia has taken a stake in Tesla, about $2 billion, anywhere from 2% to 5% to here, and that Elon Musk and Masayoshi son of SoftBank have held talks as well back in April of 2017 to discuss a possible investment there. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, this is fascinating, and I think there's a huge fallacy that people think Tesla's desperate for capital and can't raise money, when I think the opposite is the case. They have a ton of options to people who would want to invest, and the Saudi Arabia investment sort of validates this. So I sort of see two different paths forward for Tesla if they do go private, partnering with one really large private entity to sort of back all of it and then that then be a strategic partner. I think SoftBank makes a lot of sense, Google and Waymo. They almost tried to buy Tesla way back in 2013, I believe. And so the other strategy, though, would be maybe splitting up the ownership, giving a little bit to Saudi Arabia, a little bit to SoftBank, uh, a little bit to someone else so that Elon can still retain control. But those would be sort of the two strategies I see. I saw uh, an interesting tweet this morning that pointed out some comparisons between Elon Musk and some other CEOs that effectively control their companies. Mm. Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, mm. who, yes, have sort of come up uh, against some tensions at times with the analyst community, but who largely ignore them and just do what they're going to do. At what point does the erraticness at times of Musk's behavior become a liability? You know, I think Musk's behavior, he's, you know, made some questionable tweets, but overall I think he's an awesome CEO and done a great job, and I just think he should ignore the critics and skeptics and just continue to execute, and that's what's really frustrating about this move is reading the letter. It seems like Tesla wants to go private because they're worried being public is making them fo focus on the short term instead of the long term, and I just totally disagree that you need to be private to focus on the long term. Look at what Bezos has done with Amazon. I just think maybe the company needs a little bit thicker skin and they could just get through this, and I really think we're at the cusp of Model 3 He's ramped. The stock has, in my opinion, tremendous upside in the near term. So it's just frustrating to see, like, right before the KO punch is thrown, they're going to go private. I just talked to Kathy Wood of ARK Investments, and she owns uh, Tesla through her ETFs. Mm -hmm. And she was saying, she was also making comparisons between Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. The difference being that Jeff Bezos has learned to tune out the noise. He doesn't show up on the earnings conference call, right? Mm -hmm. He leaves that to the professionals who run the company. Would you be happy with something like that, given that you want to be hearing from Tesla, you want to be hearing from Elon Musk on the latest, you're interested in the company as a test case? Yeah, I think we always need to have a dialogue with Elon Musk. That's super important. Um, and I also think it's really interesting to note that way back in the day, uh, Bezos did have spats with analysts and, you know, was quoted in the Washington Post, which he now owns, saying their reports were hogwash. So it's funny if you go back in history, like, although it seems unique what Elon and Tesla is going through now, this has happened to a lot of companies uh, just like Amazon. But now Bezos has stepped back a little. Okay, so if you could ask Elon Musk any question now, if you were to open the floor to you now, right now, what would you ask him? Uh, I, I wouldn't really ask him anything. I would just 
focus on you know really thinking through that short-term noise isn't guiding this decision and really thinking if being taking a step back in terms of liquidity and transparency is really the right move just because of short-term media noise um is there anything he could do that would make you lose faith i mean this is a guy not uh, leave the tensions with analysts aside the cash burn issue is an issue in the minds of analysts, certainly. You know, you mentioned his questionable tweets. I mean, he called a guy a pedophile who, who criticized him. I mean, that's not a n nothing thing. What, what would be a tipping point for you? Yeah, uh, it's really hard to say. I mean, Elon Musk is the biggest reason I'm invested in Tesla. I think he's a phenomenal entrepreneur, businessman, engineer, and software guy. That combination couldn't be you know, a better package to lead a software first automaker that's gonna disrupt the industry. So, I, and I think he's really learning and growing up and I, I don't support that pedophile tweet. I think that was a mistake, but I think he learned from it. So, I mean, obviously if we continue to see that behavior, I would, I would lose faith, but I, I think Elon Musk is a mature guy overall and he'll learn from that and, and I still really believe in him.